So I'm sure by now your inbox has been filling up with videos about PewDiePie, aka Felix Kelberg, and the Wall Street Journal hit piece on him that appears to have backfired so spectacularly. So I'll briefly go over the basics of the story for those not familiar with it, and then try and cover some ground that others may not have. So PewDiePie was the biggest earning YouTuber for the last two years running, earning $15 million in 2016, and he has 53 million subscribers. Now, I don't watch his content, and I think it's safe to say that I'm not his target demographic, but I know who he is and vaguely know what type of content he makes. He's basically an online comedian of sorts. And in case you've forgotten in the age of political correctness, a comedian is someone that makes jokes and tries to make people laugh. And judging by his sub count and earnings, I'd say he's pretty successful at it. Now, from time to time, Felix, or PewDiePie, has used some Nazi images and jokes that could be considered anti-Semitic. For example, this one here, where he was comparing the YouTube Heroes program to a bunch of Nazis, which I actually think is pretty funny, and far more accurate than the way leftists throw around the Nazi label. But the joke that got him into hot water was this skit that he paid for on Fiverr just to see if they would actually do it. And they did. So I can see why some people might find that offensive. But remember, PewDiePie is not making political statements. Yes, he has got a big audience and he has a lot of influence. But he is what he is. He's a guy on the internet trying to make people laugh. And yeah, this joke may be distasteful to some. But he was big enough to recognize that. And here's what he had to say about it. I want to address the biggest issue first, which I think is the whole uh, guys holding up the sign thing. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it. It's been everywhere. A lot of people loved the video, and a lot of people didn't. And it's almost like two generations of people arguing whether this is okay or not. But regardless of that, I just wanted to reiterate that my intention was to just to show how stupid the website is and how far you can push it by paying $5. I am sorry for the words that I used, uh, as I know they offended people, and I admit that the joke itself went too far. I do strongly believe that you can joke about anything, but I also believe that there's a, there's a right way and not the best way to joke about things, and I love to push boundaries. But I would consider myself a rookie comedian, and I've definitely made mistakes like this before. But it's always been a growing and learning experience for me, and it's something that I actually learned to really appreciate. And I think this whole situation has definitely been that for me. And it's something that I'm going to keep in mind uh, moving forward. So that video was removed, and then the Wall Street Journal reached out to Disney for comment. And Disney informed them they were cutting ties with PewDiePie. And YouTube also axed his YouTube Red series. And of course, most of the mainstream media just jumped on the bandwagon. Now, I don't blame Disney for cutting ties or YouTube for axing the YouTube Red series. That's a commercial decision. But at the end of the day, the Wall Street Journal has done a hatchet job. And they didn't just write it in an article. They made a short four and a half minute clip that's presented in the style of an expose about a paedophile ring. But one of the most satisfying parts of this little smear campaign is the reference to PewDiePie being celebrated on the neo-Nazi website The Daily Stormer as the world's number one PewDiePie fan site. But since this little hit piece has aired, The Daily Stormer has beautifully trolled The Wall Street Journal and the three authors of the hit piece by announcing they are now the world's number one Wall Street Journal fan site. Now that's what you call karma. So let's look at the response to PewDiePie's response video. Almost 13 million views, 1.77 million likes, and 28,500 dislikes. And that's not surprising, given that you'd expect his subscriber base to rally around him. And how about the Wall Street Journal? 122,000 views, 265 likes, and almost 48,000 dislikes. That's probably one of the worst like-dislikes ratios I've ever seen. But let's not fall for an appeal to popularity. So let's listen to what PewDiePie said about the Wall Street Journal piece. Here's the thing though, they don't call it jokes. They call it posts. I made a point that the media takes what I say out of context. They take that and put it out of context. 
to use against me and to portray, portray me as a Nazi. They used another video where I joke that the YouTube Heroes program is seen basically like a Nazi scheme where I look at um, a Hitler speech and they use that as proof that I'm a Nazi or anti-Semite. I'm not kidding. They used even me pointing my arm like this. Technically, they can, they can use this as evidence as well because that's what they did. I'm not joking. The Wall Street Journal did this. It's the most absurd thing I have ever heard. <laughs> there is more. They took another video where I explain how the media is taking everything I say and do out of context and how damaging that is. And then they took the last part of that, which was a joke where I dressed up uh, in a uh, soldier outfit and again looking at Hitler's speech. They took that part. They ignored the whole part about me talking about context and they took that part and put it out of context. They took parts where in my game other people created swastikas and my title of that video is Stop Doing This. Stop Doing This. That's basically what I said. Stop making swastikas in my game. They took that as evidence against me. This is not an article. This was a personal attack against me. It is so clear. This form of cherry picking just shows it so clearly to me. Now he's probably right about all that, but he actually said something earlier in his response video that I thought was also noteworthy. If there's anything I learned about the media f from being a public figure is how they blatantly misrepresent people for their own personal gain, even viciously attack people just to further themselves. And if you watch my channel closely, you can tell that it's something that I've really been fighting back on lately. I, I literally said the media is stupid and that clickbait media is a huge problem because all they really need is a strong title. That's all that really matters. Now, whilst the title of the Wall Street Journal clip is not particularly clickbaity, it is a blatant attempt to grab views. Now, the Wall Street Journal YouTube site has about 480,000 subscribers. Not bad. I wish I had that many. But it's not a lot for a mainstream media outlet. The Young Turks have just over three and a quarter million subscribers. But it's also misleading to fixate on subscriber numbers. A healthy channel will not only have a large and growing number of subscribers, but will attract healthy view counts on their videos. The Young Turks regularly get view counts over 100,000. PewDiePie gets view counts in the millions. The Wall Street Journal, well, not so much. In fact, I went through their last 60 videos and found that 49 or almost 82% had view counts under 5,000 views. And 35 out of 60, or almost 60%, had less than 3,000 views. The PewDiePie video, 122,000 views. So the Wall Street Journal is literally shitting out video content at the rate of about 15 videos a day and getting very little traction. So a beat up like this on the most popular YouTuber with tens of millions of subscribers was undoubtedly a good move from a view count perspective. But there are probably conversations going on right now about whether those view counts are worth the blowback. I think most internet personalities can agree with me that the media generally doesn't like us very much. Variety, for example, posted in 2013, if PewDiePie is YouTube's top talent, we are all doomed. That was sort of my introduction to the media. This is in 2013. And although I don't think I understood it at the time, I think what this article shows more than anything, old school media does not like internet personalities because they're scared of us. We have so much influence and such a large voice and I don't think they understand it and that's why they keep this approach to us. Now, perhaps the higher-ups over at the Wall Street Journal are fine with it, and they stand behind their authors. But if you have to sacrifice journalistic integrity just for views, that's a dangerous gamble. And I think it speaks to a larger issue with the mainstream media. That is, how to mount a serious presence in new media, and to appeal to younger demographics. According to Pew Research, although most people say they often get their news from TV, when you break it down by age group, 50% of 18 to 29 year olds and 49% of 30 to 49 year olds get most of their news online. And that's only going to grow over time. Now, of course, the mainstream media is no doubt aware of these changes, but they're having trouble adapting. And the kind of hit piece put out by the Wall Street Journal has a tinge of desperation about it. But I'll let PewDiePie have the last word on that. Some people have been saying that these jokes are normalizing hatred. Regardless if that's true or not, spoilers, it's not. Unless there's 53 million Nazis watching me for some reason. 
a personal attack like this to portray me as anti-Semitic is doing no one a favor. You're targeting a, some Swedish guy that <laughs> tries to be funny. Most of the time, it doesn't really go well. Very offensive. But he means well. <laughs> but is there any hate in what I do? No, absolutely not. Personally, I think they are the ones normalizing hatred. Because there is actual hatred out there. there. I'm just pointing with my hand. Calm down. There's actual hatred out there. There's actual issues. Instead of celebrating my show getting cancelled, why don't we focus on that instead? Why don't we focus on some real issues? Why is that the way to approach things in 2017? I'm still here. I'm still making videos. Nice try, Wall Street Journal. Try again, motherfuckers. And just a reminder that you can support this channel by liking, subscribing, or making a donation via Patreon. See you next time.